Hello InfoPerson, this is Anton, and in this video we're mostly going to explore some of the imagery from the James Webb Space Telescope, focusing on all of the incredible images the telescope sent to us throughout 2022, mostly focusing on some of the most incredible images we've received so far. And if you want to learn more about each individual image, check out one of the previous videos that actually goes through them in more detail. But anyway, let's begin with this. The incredibly gorgeous image of Jupiter from right here in the solar system. In this case, highlighting the aurora, the great spot of Jupiter, and also the beautiful ring formation along with various interactions with Jupiter's moons. Definitely Jupiter like we've never seen it before. Here is the annotated version of what you're looking at here, just to give you a little bit more detail. We also got to see the famous Carina Nebula, one of the largest nebula next to the solar system, with a lot more detail than we've ever seen before. In this case, highlighting a lot of hidden stars and a lot of hidden objects that were previously invisible because of all of the gas. They do become visible in the infrared light. We also got to see this beautiful compilation of galaxies, five galaxies, known as the Stevens Quintet, with several of these galaxies interacting and creating quite a lot of incredible effects. And because the James Webb was able to see this in several frequencies, it actually does look very different depending on what infrared frequency you look at. We then got to see something a little bit closer to home, the famous Southern Ring Nebula, created by a star similar to our Sun, but in this case possessing a lot of unusual shapes and a lot of unusual features that were actually previously unexplained. Because of James Webb, they were now explained very thoroughly. It turns out that a lot of these unusual shapes in the nebula are formed by the multitude of stars orbiting in the middle. There's not just one or two stars here, there are possibly up to five. Which is why this nebula contains so many different layers and so many unusual shapes. And this was probably one of the most important first images, the deep field image of a distant cluster known as SMAX0723, a cluster that contains quite a lot of different gravitational landing effects and a cluster that already revealed so many new record holders. And here we're talking about the most distant galaxies, some of the most distant stars, the most distant global clusters, and so many other mysterious objects tackled in some of the previous videos that, as always, you can find in the description below. In the process of also discovering that some of these galaxies are actually the same galaxy. These are mirror images, mostly because, because these are landing effects of the same galaxy being split into several images with some other exciting discoveries involving some of the most distant galaxies discovered to date. A lot of these have already broken a lot of records. We also got to observe some of the most incredible images of the famous Cartwheel Galaxy, the galaxy that was seen in different infrared frequencies and essentially allowed the scientists to study the evolution of these unusual galaxies and helping us figure out how these galaxies evolve over time which actually has become a pretty big project for the collaboration between the Hubble telescope and the James Webb. In the last few months, both telescopes have been pointed at various galaxies in order to capture the detail that the other telescope would not be able to see, with the main purpose here being very simple, evolution of galaxies and figuring out how galaxies like the Milky Way are born, which is why most of the focus so far has been on these spiral galaxies that are usually extremely easily visible from planet Earth. We also got to see the first exoplanet that the James Webb has ever seen. This is actually not the first discovery of this planet, it's been seen before, but these are the most detailed observations of this planet as of 2022, the planet known as HIP 65426b. Then the telescope was pointed at the most active region in the nearby space. This is known as the Tarantula Nebula, the most active star-forming region visible to us from planet Earth. This is not in the Milky Way galaxy, this is in the nearby Large Magellanic Cloud, but this is the region that contains some of the largest, most massive, most active and most, a lot of other things, stars that we've discovered to date. As a matter of fact, a lot of record holders when it comes to stars are all located right in this region, including the famous star known as R136A1, the most massive star ever discovered. Then, a little bit closer to home, we got to see Mars specifically the heat map of Mars, which also included an extremely thorough analysis of the atmospheric composition of Mars, essentially discovering what's hiding in the atmosphere. But none of this was a secret to us. As a matter of fact, one of the main reasons for this particular image is to essentially figure out what a lot of similar exoplanets far, far away from us might look like in comparison to Mars. 
And so this basically just serves as a kind of a sample, or as a kind of a proof of concept, when looking at a lot of different exoplanets. Then we had some other beautiful images of other objects in the solar system. For example, here's what Neptune looks like, compared to the observations from the Voyager and the Hubble Space Telescope. And what's really impressive about this image is, of course, apart from the rings, the fact that we also see various weather patterns and various spots of Neptune visible because of the temperature differences in the atmosphere of the planet. And if you look at the larger image, you also get to see an extremely bright object, Triton, the moon of Neptune. The moon that we believe was captured a long time ago and is most likely extremely similar to Pluto. Here is another beautiful picture of a galaxy known as IC 5332, captured by both Hubble and the Webb telescope, pretty much for the same reasons, figuring out the evolution of various galaxies similar to the Milky Way. Now, one of the most exciting observations in the last few months was the joint observation of a lot of different telescopes of the pre planned collision with the asteroid Dimorphos. This was part of the DART mission we discussed very recently. And in this case, both the Hubble and the Webb telescopes observed the emissions as they happened in real time. For the Webb telescope, it looks something like this. And a lot of these initial observations were really important for establishing what sort of ejecta was created by this collision in order to then try to figure out what this asteroid is made out of and why exactly so much propulsion was produced when the probe collided with the asteroid. Once again, more detail and more explanation in that video from before. And then we have this beautiful image of a pair of galaxies, referred to as VV191, that seem to be located next to each other in a very unusual way. Although what's super intriguing to the scientists about this image is not really the fact that these galaxies are positioned this way, but the fact that one of these galaxies is gravitationally lensing another really distant galaxy that was previously invisible up until James Webb saw it in the infrared. And so it definitely presents a pretty interesting image which actually kind of resembles an owl or something else staring back at us from really, really far away. And then we have this iconic image, probably one of the more important images and one of the more important discoveries in the last few months. This is WR140, a distant wolf Rayet star that seems to have another partner whose unusual orbit around the star causes the star to release large amounts of matter every few years. And they actually create these unusual layers that you see right here. So this is not a lensing effect, this is not an effect from the camera, these layers are real, as we've discussed in that previous video in the description. We also got to see incredible new imagery of the famous Pillars of Creation. The iconic image that became really famous because of the Hubble telescope, but now examined in other frequencies using James Webb. Specifically discovering a lot of new active regions, a lot of unusual star formation, and a lot of other activity that the scientists are still trying to understand. Then further analysis of some of the earlier images started to reveal incredible detail of things we've never seen before. For example, here we're looking at really, really early galaxies interacting and potentially colliding. Which of course means that these are the earliest galactic collisions observed by the scientists. We also got to observe some really beautiful images from a lot of extremely active galaxies that actually appear extremely bright because of all of the star formation that's happening inside the galaxy. In this case, even though this galaxy is 270 million light years away from us, because of the rate of star formation that's about 20 times as high as in the Milky Way galaxy, this galaxy appears extremely bright. And just for fun, NASA has also released some really incredible comparisons of the previous most powerful infrared telescope, the Spitzer telescope, comparing the same region when observed by the James Webb. And it's absolutely incredible how much more accurate and more detailed this image is. No wonder a lot of astronomers have been so excited about this mission. And here's what this would look like with the Hubble telescope as well. And then we got this. Probably the most spectacular image of the entire series. Now this is actually a picture from the Milky Way galaxy, and it's a picture of a very young star. And because of the activity inside this protostar, it actually generates a lot of powerful emissions, resulting in the cones that you see, along with a lot of other unusual effects. Which, by the way, is also one of the primary missions for this telescope, figuring out how stars evolve and how young stars turn into objects like our Sun. And then, of course, we get to see some incredible images of potentially some of the most distant galaxies we've ever seen. A lot of these galaxies were already around when the universe was only a few hundred million years old. And in this case, most of them have already been confirmed, but some of them, some of the most distant ones, still have not been confirmed and do create a bit of a mystery. How is it possible that they were already around so early on? 
we also got to see more images of various colliding galaxies, in this case once again captured by both Hubble and the James Webb. And this one is particularly colorful because of all of the activity that seems to have resulted from the collision of two galaxies. Then, on November 4th, we actually got to see Titan, one of the moons of Saturn. And in this case, it was really the detection of clouds and some kind of a atmospheric haze that was super exciting for a lot of different scientists. It once again confirmed that Titan has some kind of a liquid cycle and definitely has a lot of atmospheric conditions somewhat similar to planet Earth. Although in this case, involving methane and ethane, not water at all. And that's because it's super cold here, something like minus 180 degrees Celsius. At the same time, the telescope was also able to take a few more deep field shots where essentially it just looks at the same spot for a pretty long time, discovering a lot of galaxies in the process. And here once again it was able to identify and even confirm several super distant galaxies previously unknown to us. At the moment, the record holder here is at the redshift of 13.2, with a similar observation from a different spot, revealing a lot of other galactic interaction and a lot of other galactic collision, including some galaxies that seem to be already quite developed and possessing a lot of complex shapes. And lastly, one of the last images was of another beautiful galaxy known as NGC 7469, a super dusty galaxy that also possesses an extremely bright central region, so bright as a matter of fact that it produces the diffraction spikes usually only produced by very close stars. And this is at a distance of 220 million light years away from us. Intriguingly, when looked at with the Hubble telescope, the galaxy looks almost entirely different. And so by comparing the observations from the Hubble with the observations from the James Webb, the point here is to eventually figure out how some of these galaxies evolved to be the way they are. For example, what exactly made this galaxy so extremely active in the center? Although the answers to why are not going to be available for quite some time. The actual studies and the explanations will probably appear months, if not years, later. But anyway, so these were the most impressive and major images coming from the James Webb in the last few months. But naturally this is just the beginning. We have at least 19 more years to go for this telescope, which means that there are going to be so many more discoveries, incredible discoveries to talk about in the years to come. And if you'd like to learn more, well, make sure to subscribe. I'm going to make sure I don't miss any discoveries from this telescope, and I'm going to try to explain as much as I can. On that note, this video is going to come in two parts, with one without the annotation and just the imagery, so if you don't want to hear me yap about this, you can watch the other video as well. Thank you for watching, subscribe, share this with someone who has learned about space and sciences, come back tomorrow to learn something else, and maybe support this channel on Patreon by joining channel membership or by buying the wonderful person t-shirt with a James Webb Space Telescope on it in the description below. Stay wonderful, I'll see you tomorrow, and as always, bye-bye.